Welcome to our lecture online. So here we have another example, a little bit more complicated than the previous one, where we have to find the current, and of course we have what we call magnetic coupling between the two inductors in the two loops. They're otherwise not connected with one another. So notice to make things speed up a little bit, already put everything in terms of the time domain and the frequency domain, so it's easier to go ahead and solve this problem. And what we're going to do in part one, we're just going to find the two equations for loop one and loop two using KVL. We're going to go around each loop, add up all the voltage rises and all the voltage drops, so we end up with two equations. Then in the next video, we're going to solve that using the matrix method or the determinant method. And then on the final uh, go around, on the third uh, video, we're going to show you how to find the energy stored in the um, in the circuit at a particular moment in time. So let's first find the two equations for the loops. We're going to go around loop one. And the reason why we want to show several examples, of course, is because the nuances are a little bit different. Notice that in this case, the current enters the inductor on the other side of the dot, and in, on the right side, on the, the right loop, it enters at the dot. So here we have the opposite uh, the current enter the inductors at the opposite ends relative to one another and so now you'll see how that affects the way we set up the equations all right starting at the left corner right here we go across the um, the voltage supply and notice that the it's simply equal to 100 volts so we have a positive 100 a voltage rise then we have a voltage drop across the resistor which is minus four times i1 then we have a voltage drop across the capacitor. However, because the phase difference of the capacitor, notice that for the capacitor, 1 8 farad, that becomes a minus J4. So we're going to subtract a minus J4, which becomes, of course, a plus J4 times I1. So plus J4 times I1. Then we go across the inductor. That's a voltage drop. It's a two Henry inductor. So notice we have a plus J4. Oh, no, I'll take that back. It's minus because we have a voltage drop. So minus J4 I1. So the reason why this is positive and this is negative, we actually have a voltage drop across each, but because the 180 degree phase difference between the reactance of a capacitor and the reactance of an inductor, we then turn the negative into a positive. Finally, we need to worry about the cross coupling or the what we call the magnetic coupling. Notice that in this case, we have the current entering here on the left side and entering here on the right side. So if they enter both on the same side, both on the dot side or both on the non-dot side, then we have a voltage drop because we go around the, cur we go around the loop and we, we have a voltage drop across each. But because on one side we enter the inductor on this side and we enter the inductor on the dot side on the right side, now that's 180 degrees out of phase, so we have to turn a negative into a positive, so here we have a plus J, we have a one Henry magnetic coupling, and so that gives us plus J2, but it's the current in the other loop that's causing that, so it's I2, and so that is set equal to zero. Oh, yeah, zero, that's right. So we go all the way around the loop, and all the voltage rises and drops add up to zero. So notice that we have to be very careful about the signs. Now let's uh, combine like terms here. So we have 100 uh, I1, I1, I1. Oh, notice that these two cancel each other out. So I end up with a minus 4 I1, and then I end up with a plus J2 I2 equals zero. Moving the, other, the 100 to the other side, I end up with a minus 4 I1 plus J2 I2 equals minus 100. And finally, uh, to get rid of the negative here, I can probably go ahead and write it as 4 I1 minus J2 I2 equals a positive 100. So there is our first equation for the first loop, loop one. All right, let's do this now for loop two. Let's start over here, and we go across the inductor that the voltage drop, and so we end up with a minus uh, 1 Henry, of course, is going to be a J2, so it's a minus J2 times I2. Coming around, we drop across the resistor, so it's minus 2 ohms times I2. And then we have to worry about the cross, the mutual, um, the mutual magnetic coupling. 
Uh, let's see here. Notice again that on one side the current enters the non-dot side, on the right side it enters the dot side, so it's opposite sides. So instead of a voltage drop, we now end up with voltage rise because the 180 degree phase difference, so that becomes a plus. It's a mutual inductance of one Henry, which is a plus J2. And it's the current in the other circuit that's causing it times I1 equal zero. So combining this, we end up with a J2 I1 minus a 2 plus J2 I2 equals 0. I like to write it like this. Eh, doesn't matter, I guess, but I prefer it that way. So now we have our two equations. And so once we have the two equations, we now can solve them simultaneously to solve for I1 and I2. And we'll do that on the next video, keeping things a little bit cleaner. I'll make some, I'll, I'll raise the board a little bit make some more room, and then we'll use the method of determinants to solve for I1 and I2. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.